Good evening, friends. Happy Friday to you. Thank you so much for joining us here at the 100th Meridian, where, good lord, our future is bright. Hope it's getting a little dimmer now. There we go. That's more in tune with our expectations. Thank you for joining us here, for spending part of your Friday evening with us here at Roleplaying Unlimited. Hope you've had a great, great week so far. And we have here a little something different. A uh, departure from the Coalescence zombie apocalypse campaigns that we've been telling for the last couple weeks. We are back to the Dragonlance module with our party of adventurers who are already assembled in our voice chat. So we're going to jump in and see just what uh, kind of adventures we get into this evening. I had a little... Uh, complete breakdown a few minutes ago the whole system shut down computer monitors streaming light uh i thought the power shut out but then i was like well the light's still on behind me and uh only to realize uh that my dog had stepped on the little power switch here and uh completely shut us down so uh i am still getting everything set back up here and that delay aside we are ready Ah! Hello. <clears throat> Howdy, stranger. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Good evening. Happy Friday to you. Happy Friday there, sir. Friday the 13th, plus 10. Wait a minute. It's Saturday. Oh, that's true. Saturday the 14th, minus 11. Or minus Everybody's 10. confused. Where you're at. Oh no, I've gone cross-eyed. That is one fancy get-up. Are you with the show? Oh no, I'm English. Oh, sorry. Well, uh, what's going on, everybody? We've got our Dragonlance adventure on cue here once again. Let's get back to Calaman, where our party is located. Uh, we are going to be without the trickster Kender, uh, Esther, for uh, the foreseeable future. Unfortunately, John's got some stuff going on IRL, so uh, we're going to hold his uh, seat here for him, keep his character in the archives, and hopefully he can uh, join back up with us sooner than later. But yeah, we will be missing him at not one, not two, but three tables here at Roleplaying Unlimited. So, uh... Much love, friend. Hope uh, recovery and peace finds you very soon, dude. And as posted in our uh, chat, I kind of, uh, I think I gave a pretty thorough recap of what happened last session. I know Justin was absent for our session, I think it was three weeks ago. Uh, we had a, a skip week here with uh, the coalescence coming back, and now we're set in our new schedule. But, uh, yeah, we definitely had uh, some interesting events come about last time around. Let me see if I can... Yeah, here it is. The group returned to Calaman. The gate guards were on alert. Of course, given the recent events, there was some brief interaction before they let the party in. And it was there that Esther decided to try to pick a scroll off a guard's belt and was caught. This raised suspicions, and three of the party stayed behind while the other three went to the castle to follow up on the plot rumors. At the gate, after some persuasion, the guards were prepared to let them pass again, but then Zilyana decided to steal the scroll. She did, but one of the other guards spotted her. Esther was chased through the city and arrested. Lance surrendered peacefully when the guards demanded he do so, and Zilyana escaped through the closing gate back outside the city. The scroll, turns out, was filled with guards' orders, passwords, uh, deployments, etc. of that nature. The rest of the party at the castle found that these Salomnic knights who had supposedly arrived to reinforce the guards had instead killed the governor and the entire city council. A knight named Caradoc remained behind to chat with the party, but he was attacked immediately upon the party determining that he was undead. Poor guy, he just wanted to talk. After defeating him, they continued through the castle into the catacombs. 
During this time, Zilyana fashioned a guard disguise, infiltrated the city and the dungeon, and freed her two captive friends, uh, one of whom was apparently recaptured and re-imprisoned. Uh, no, that's, we're not going to do Esther like that. <laughs> uh, they eventually caught back up to the others when they were halfway through the catacombs. The end boss battle for the chapter was a disgraced knight who Lord Soth had come to visit, possibly to reanimate for some purpose. The knight was clearly controlled, as it just kept repeating the same phrases of I am summoned to the lost city in the north, and Lord Soth demands I kill all who intrude. Uh, it was a more challenging battle. Uh, especially in the battle with Knight Caradoc, who proved to be an undead spirit who was possessing a very real Salomnic Knight, who uh, in another time and place might have proved to be a future ally, but as our party didn't have all the information, uh, or maybe we did, ah, they killed him, and he ended up possessing Doc and forcing the others to take him down before they were able to fight the spirit again and uh, vanquish it. Although vanquish in a loose term because it just kind of floated away. It was like, I'll see you again, catch it. And that is uh, where we ended things. Uh, the, uh, what did it, but, uh, the force that had left Calaman under the command of uh, Squire Derrett who you guys had just before these events traveled all the way out here to save them from a, uh, a sure routing. They, as uh, being a force of a few hundred people, they're moving much slower than your group, so they insisted you head back to Calaman to report to the city leaders what had happened back out here. And, of course, arriving back here, not only do we find the city council completely slaughtered, but uh, we've also possibly earned a, uh, a, uh, an asterisk next to our group's reputation in the city councils. Yes, you are now the city leaders. We'll just uh, dress up as them, have Katie roll another disguise check. Uh, which one of you is going to be the governor? Do you guys remember the accent that I used for him? If you don't, no go. I don't remember it either, so you might be able to fool me. That's, that's well, I mean, so what was I doing during all this? <laughs> um, I would imagine as soon as you guys got back to Calaman, you went uh, to one of the, uh, like either to a store to resupply or to a tavern to get a meal or something in that respect. Yo, Johnny B joining supporter membership. Much love. Much thanks, brother. So I'm not even aware of what the fuck they've done yet. <laughs> I would say so. I would say at this point, now that you've gotten um, your your feet back under you, you're feeling a little better. Maybe you were a little lightheaded after all of the uh, the journey or whatever. For whatever reason, you just you had to you had to take a, a little short rest there upon arriving back to the city. You are aware of the Salomnic Knights who had went to visit the city council. This is information the guards at the gate would have given your entire group. So you are aware that uh, presumably the entire group went to the castle. So that's maybe why you felt a little comfortable. Like, okay, you guys all got this handled. I'm just going to take a break for a minute. You guys report back. Find out what's up with these Salomnic Knights. Maybe we got some reinforcements. Catch up with me back at the tavern. And then you start hearing rumors of, man, did you hear what happened to that, at that Kender? from Vogler. Yeah, he was trying to steal shit from the guards. Yeah, something's going on at the uh, the castle. The guards are on high alert and everything is uh, shut down right now. So with that, maybe you uh, expedite your meal and get your uh, get yourself back on the road to catch up with our party at the castle. Or maybe hearing that, I'm like, I better fucking go. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Screw these guys. You guys, I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going to go find uh, Sir Reginald and we'll get the fuck out of here. These people are in fucking trouble. <laughs> Doc's like, hey, don't forget about me. I'm, I'm on the side of good. <laughs> yeah. It should be getting crazy now. <laughs> A little bit. That's why I was posting. I'm, I'm kind of uh, getting 
vibes of that old Forgotten Realms campaign that we had where it was kind of a free-for-all. Everybody create what you want and find a way to make a cohesive party. Uh, great success on the first half of that as far as cohesive party. Uh, everybody just kind of did their own thing and we ended up with three separate parties inside of the one party. But because I didn't like people to have downtime waiting for group A to finish their stuff, everybody ended up creating multiple characters. So they had characters in group A, group B. Group C was just one character who the entire party had decided we don't want anything to do with. And he was resurrected and came back and was like, oh, these guys don't like me? Well, screw them. <laughs> Poor oh, Josh. Boy. <laughs> So yes, we are all here at the uh, the Calaman Castle. Uh, Hawakan, of course, being admitted to rejoin the rest of his companions, if such is the way that we're going. Otherwise, uh, we are all together in some respect. Some of us have been injured, as we can see. I guess when I come up Just to a the group... Wound. I guess when I approach the group, I'm going to be like, um, should I even ask what is going on? I'm dead. I was going to say that. Why is Doc at full health? Yeah, so we'll recap the story so we don't have to recap the story. Okay. Well, I mean, how much of the gate shenanigans are actually uh, retold? Lance will express that he is completely innocent. Oh, you know Zill is going to brag about everything that she did. Okay, then. <laughs> did uh, Ken say undead or I'm dead? I said undead. Okay. I was going to say, I don't remember a character death, but I was like scrolling back up through the chat log. I'm like, dead! What? I'm dead! <laughs> Like, yeah, we might need to take care of that. Oh, shit, the cleric's the one who's dead. Whoops. No, I'm back to... Shouldn't be full health, but... I should be healed some. I don't know... What happened there. Oh, it was probably when you leveled up. It automatically assumes that you're getting a long rest, but that's not necessarily the case, so... Certain things like status conditions, uh, abilities, and spell slots that were expended, hit point values, you kind of have to keep a, a manual eye on when it comes to the level up. All right, so they mentioned uh, Lord Soth was definitely a name that was used. Um, oh, is yeah, people gotta... already aware of that, or do I need to make it like a history check for that? Um, it is something that you are brought into the know based on uh, the events that the party went through. As they explored the, this crypt, they were inundated with multiple visions from the past. Uh, it was uh, kind of like that hearth fire that I used in Enemir, except it's uh, it's like residual unstable magic from the Cataclysm that's allowing you guys to see these past events. And it basically told the story of Lord Soth, how he, he turned his back on his first wife to oh, wed this elf, and... Um, he left her because he was given this quest by the gods to prevent the cataclysm, and as he was on his way to fulfill this quest, he was deceived and told that his elf was being un his uh, his elf wife was being unfaithful to him. So instead of fulfilling the task that the gods had set upon him, he turned back and confronted his wife, and he was strangling her to death while the cataclysm was going on. Wait, well, I'm. Out of game, I'm very familiar with uh, right. Lord Stop. <laughs> yeah, in game now, our characters all have a, a very, very firm understanding of who this person is. We've heard the name in in legend before, and possibly have known a bit more about it. But this is maybe the first time that we have the full picture in order. Oh my! So we think that this Soth came through here. Exactly, and he created uh, his own route through by uh, busting holes through the walls. Uh, 
Oh, that's uh... <sighs> so. What's next then? Like every party member's dream, I get to create my own path through the dungeon. <laughs> I'm. Uh, my best idea would be that we need to uh, wait until the rest of the knights arrive and uh, explain the situation of what happened in here. We can't do that. However, we do know what direction he is going to. Somewhere up here. Does um, Derek and his group, do they have a far gap with them? Uh, they do. I'll mention that. We can tell them now. Good idea. That's the item in question right there, just for those uh, unaware of just what it is. A backpack-sized device. It's basically a, a cell phone, but uh, you're basically carrying around your own phone booth with you right there. Hey, thanks for the follow there, Crazy Blue Cat. Welcome to the show. Are you with us? It's, I, I, I'd equate it to those old army radios, like in World War II and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so... We'll utilize that, get in touch with the um, knights, and let them know the situation with the city leaders. It's a, a bit of a staticky response. Of course, it's not a, a perfect technology. But Derrett is the one who is eventually put on the other end of the line, and he responds, Oh, our progress couldn't come at a better time. We're, we're almost back to the city. We'll we'll find out the full story from you then. It sounds like they're uh, they're like on a forced march right now. Like you could just hear a lot of uh, hundreds of foot footsteps marching in double time. Derek could just sense that bullshit was happening. Okay, I think what we should do is uh, until they get here, um, get a little bit of rest, get some food. Uh, be prepared to possibly move out uh, at a moment's notice. Remember that Zolyan is a criminal and I technically escaped from prison. <laughs> You'll have to deal with that on your own. Some night. I was thrown in jail because of injustice. <laughs> I walk and just shakes his head in disgust and walks over to the inn. You were thrown in jail because you got caught. That's on you. You shouldn't have done it in us. the first place. No, I shouldn't have done it in the first place. <laughs> Look, if you can't show a little restraint then maybe you may not be cut out for this mission. It would be helpful to have a more solid definition of restraint, then. Well, I don't condone her actions. I do have to agree that at least she wasn't caught, and her skills are most likely going to be useful. I admire your honesty. How could you talk? <laughs> How very dare you. <laughs> oh, I still agree that she should not have tried to steal anything, but her skills could be useful and she didn't get caught, so there is that. Talk is so good, man. I don't know exactly what happened at the gate or who saw what, but if the guards decide to identify you and decide that uh, jail is where you belong, then that's where you shall be. However, if they decide to commute your sentence and allow you to work off your sentence by completing this mission, then I will agree to that as well. I will not go quietly this day.
That's all I'll say. There is a report of horns coming from the main gate on the west side of the city where you guys can tell that Derrett and the remainder of the forces are returning. Let's go speak to Derrett. Yes, and hopefully we can get some rest because I will not be of much use very shortly. You guys and your need for sleep. It's ridiculous. Lame. <laughs> I feel I feel pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I just took short rest. I just went to the tavern and had a bowl of soup. I don't know what the hell you guys were doing. Yeah, I'm going to use... Um... Let's see, nine points of lay on hands to get up to my new temporary maximum. Oh, all right then. So yes, okay. Derrett, Highwater, and Marshall Vendry have returned to Calaman. And upon seeing uh, some or all of your group approaching, it is uh, the Marshal who approaches first and demands to know just what in the... Nine hells has been going on here in Calaman since they've been gone the last few days. Well, not to bore everybody and their brother by telling the exact same story again, I'm going to tell the exact same story again. Do it again in full detail. No, I am not going to do that. With punctuation and proper pauses for effect like that one <laughs> well upon hearing the information that you have to relay Marshal Vendry takes the uh, highest level soldiers who have returned with her and uh, they are heading to the castle to secure the scene and uh, take care of that for the time being Derrett is going to return uh, to his place of rest along with the rest of the soldiers encouraging all of your characters to do so as well looking at uh, your current condition yes I think you could all use a bit of rest and he says that he is going to uh, meet up with you the following day to uh, impart any new information as you wish so we're going to roll for random encounter, and as long as I don't roll a, a one, then... Uh, no, you're good. Uh, go ahead, get your long rest. It is a, a, a tense, anxious night here in the city, but uh, nevertheless, you do get the rest that you so richly deserve. I'll go ahead and apply my trade at storytelling in like the tavern or town square or something just to kind of help lighten some of the, the emotions and stuff. Bitchin'. Roll it up. See what kind of performance we're looking at here. Definitely better than uh, what they're used to here on average. And in addition to that, 37 in a row. We're going to look at 15 gold coins coming into your pockets. I'm going to spend time uh, cleaning my armor, uh, making minor repairs. Um, I'm not a blacksmith or anything, but, you know, okay. just try to knock out a couple dents and sharpen my uh, halberd. And Good luck with that. Oh. Boba Fett had that oh. same dent in his helmet for 35 fucking years, dude. Uh, roll a uh, flat D20 for me there, Don, and uh, go ahead and continue whoever was talking next. I was going to say, hold on before you do that, because I'm going to go ahead and help you sing as how I'm proficient with Smith's tools. Ooh. Well, that's much better. Ooh. 
would I have time after that uh, performance to go to my wizard friend who can sell healing potions? Yeah. What's a why why Han I believe, the apothecary. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, the black robed mage. I know they had like a, a limited stocks. So I don't know if they restock or not. Sure. It's been a couple days. Let's see just what we're looking at. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've got thirteen potions of healing in stock. She does seem a little put out that you're uh, showing up. Right around closing time, but uh, also upon hearing that you're here to do some business, her attitude softens considerably. Are uh, they just the regular healing potions? They are, yes. Okay, and I forget what price she was charging. Uh, she was charging... Uh, da, 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 well, it false, that was also a fluctuating thing. I know I, I was getting a better deal than anybody else because I'm a tower member. And you're also not here with uh, Esther, who's uh, <laughs> trying to stir the pot and uh, poke poke at her with his kenderous ways. She will uh, part with these for 55 gold pieces each. Just a right, smidge I'll... above the usual asking price. Pick up... Okay, to give uh, Hawakan some money to pick up some for me. Uh, sure, I would have probably said I was going. Uh, I'll give you 110, uh, pick up two. Alright, I'll pick up two for him and one for myself. And then you return to tell him that the price is 110 per potion. Ha 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 Oh, dang. Yeah, supply and demand has really gotten, gotten really bad here. No, fortunately, I am of good alignment. <laughs> so am I. And also tempted to take Arcane Trickster so I can learn magic. What's happening out there in Streamland, everybody? How's your night going? How's your weekend starting off? Thanks for being here with us. 13 viewers. Solid turnout, friends. Much love. Much love. All right. Well, the following morning, Derek will meet up with you. And, uh... Well, wait a second. Did, uh... Ken ever... Eighteen. What? You had me roll out D20. What does my 18 mean? Well, Ken interrupted that and said that he was going to help you because he has proficiency in smithing tools, and we didn't roll that, and then we got uh, diverted with the uh, the potion shopping here. So, yeah, I was hoping to uh, knock both out at the same time. Let's see what's going on with the uh, smithing tools. Yeah, what attribute you want me to roll that under? Uh, Pretty much user's choice. If there's a... Uh, as long as there's an in-game explanation for how you're using the attribute, you could even use something like Charisma. I'm charismatically forging your metal. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Constitution would be pretty on par for... Con could work, anything. Strength could work, Intelligence could work. I think those would probably be your, your common three, any of the others. Even Wisdom to a degree, it's really Dex and charisma that you might have to kind of stretch the uh, the believability, but yeah. With a 20 and Don assisting you there with an 18, you're able to knock that out before uh, spending the entire night doing so and losing your long rest. Was there anything else anybody wanted to do during the night that uh, would be capable under the light activity that you have to uh, do with the long rest? Could, uh, could I was thoroughly trounced. <laughs> I probably slept 12 hours. And that's like three days of sleep for me, dude. I'm so jealous. All the prayers. <laughs> All right. 
So we will proceed into the next day then, where Derrett comes to meet you with the following information. Firstly, Marshal Ventry is working to maintain order in Calaman until new civilian leaders are appointed. And she needs to speak with all of you very, very soon at your earliest convenience. He himself uh, has sent scouts to learn where Lord Soth and his retinue went after fleeing the city. And the scouts have reported that the Red Dragon Army has split its forces with a contingent inexplicably heading into the northern wastes. I'm not sure about much beyond anything uh, beyond that at this moment. But uh, when you are ready, I'll be nearby and ready to lead you to the meeting with Marshal Ventry. So I take the appropriate time to put my armor back on and then uh, get my weapons and head to uh, the meeting place. Well, there's your six hours of the day. What's everybody else doing? Can I investigate the area that we think saw went to in case there's anything, you know, in case there's anything we need to know about the area? Is uh, just kind of going to stay put until she's told she's needed so that way she can stay out of trouble and not get arrested. Um, as far as any information about the Northern Wastes, we will uh, cover that when we uh, start heading to that area. Okay, never mind. Because we do have some things that we know, but for the most part, uh, a lot of that will be uh, explored in-game. I'll look at I'll Reginald. Try. Just take a deep breath and be like, well, I'm ready if you are, but... Unlike some of the other people in this room, I don't really have anything to fear from this. Not, not sure if that was a dig at me or not. <laughs> yeah, the, the three criminals. I'm, I, I don't know how that's I'm a dig. So that's fine by me. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Well, let's just see what they have to say. I have a feeling they're going to send us against this Lord Soth, because I'm sure we can handle an undead warrior from the Cataclysm who can break through fucking walls. Do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why, level not? Six. why not? <laughs> uh, you guys will be at least level 7 by the time you find him. Oh, cool, okay. Have some faith in your abilities. Oh, we'll be so OP by then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It'll all yes. be good. Three die six sneak attack. Before we begin, I do have to uh, inform you that three of my companions have admitted to committing crimes and uh, have been broken out of jail. Well, not quite true, but it's fine. <laughs> Also, I literally told them the truth. Um, I think those esters just disappeared at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, esters like, I'm going to lay low for a while here. Derek kind of uh, responds to that uh, with a puzzled look. And I'm sorry, what? I have not heard anything about this. You may want to check with the uh, with the guards and find out what the scenario was. Um, from what they have told me, that they tried stealing a scroll from one of the um, people running the gate, and uh, two of our people were captured. Esther is nowhere to be found at the moment. And then uh, our rogue here broke him out of jail. I mean, they came and helped us in our time of need in combat, and I appreciate that. And if their sentence could be to complete this mission with us, um, I would appreciate that as well. 
This couldn't possibly come at a worse time. You're chilling me. I mean, it probably could. That's probably true. Always as well. a worse time. This is yeah. Beyond... Sorry, lawful, pure lawful. <laughs> this is beyond my uh, authority or ability at this point to even attempt to uh, resolve. I trust. Um, I don't even know where I was going with that. Let's go see the marshal. Very well. Marshal Vendry has claimed a modest meeting room down the hall from the council chamber that is marred by Lord Soth's tech. The room holds little more than a long table covered in reports, though tall windows offer a stunning view of the city and the harbor beyond. The marshal stands by a window, gazing toward the horizon. From a seat at the table, Lord Bacaris, everybody's favorite, glances at you and then bitterly observes, Here they are now, Marshal. Perhaps if we wouldn't, hadn't put our faith in cell swords, my son would still be at my side, and the governor be alive. The marshal turns to greet your arrival. Doesn't seem that she uh, pays much attention to Bacarus's usual negative ramblings. Your son's fate is your own fault, Bacarus. Um, I would recommend that you hold those opinions upon yourself. He has lost a son, and he is of a higher noble rank. Whether we like him or not that is irrelevant to what's going on right now. Do you see how I'm not even saying or doing anything? Maybe for once, take a lead from me. Vendry holds up a a hand for uh, quiet and uh, she looks over at Picaris and says, if you would be so kind. I have private matters I wish to discuss. The noble grabs his snifter and grudgingly complies, exiting the room. Doors I bow to him as he exits. He gives a little sneer and a half bow in return. After the door is closed, Ventry takes a seat, takes a large guzzle of water, Please explain to me wh what happened here yesterday, including, as best you know, how the governor died. And I go over the story again. <laughs> <laughs> I will, of course, add in more specifics about the um, possession ability of this undead to show that it was very easy for it to infiltrate and um, that there was no way that anyone would have been able to stop it. As you each uh, interject parts of your story, uh, how much focus are we putting on the... Uh, unfortunate events that we got ourselves into and while you do that i'm going to jump off camera here and take care of a uh, a little paperwork right here if you know what i'm saying whoop, whoop, whoop. oh that's the wrong thing that's the logo i did jump off camera but that's the that's the wrong me i'm gonna barely bring up the you know just basically um my companions told me that they had an a run-in with the uh Guards at the front gate. Um, I was not there for to personally observe it, so it would be up to her to investigate and find out from her people exactly what's going on with that. Um, I will put full detail in the spirit that we saw underneath, as well as the um, fact that a dragon lance may or may not have been taken from a tomb. She doesn't seem to know 
uh, what you're talking about as far as a dragon lance, but when it comes to the events at the gate, <clears throat> she kind of shrugs and says, well, word of what happened there has not made its way up the ranks to me. So I'm going to leave that as it stands. But at the same time, know that with this information in hand, it does alter a bit the trust that I have placed in you. Because before now, my, my faith in your abilities, my trust in your character was implicit. You came highly recommended from the citizens in Vogler. The refugees at Calaman, both from Vogler and elsewhere, spoke very highly of your assistance in helping them rebuild. And your... Whether the actions of one or just a few of you, it, it affects all of you. It affects your overall reputation. And at the same time, Lord Bacaris is spreading rumors that you, since you were here, could have saved the leaders of Calamon. And many locals, as you can expect, are looking for someone to blame for this slaughter. I understand completely. I don't know anything about uh, cities of lost names or uh, death knights by the name of Soth. The Northern Wastes are called that just for a reason. It's nothing but a, a deadly wasteland, a a remnant of the the worst effects of the cataclysm. If Soth is heading there, there's no further threat to us here. He is heading out of this region. And Derrett kind of raises a hand in protest. His goals are uh, cryptic, of course, Marshall, but if if my friends here have if they are putting stock in this discovery i do believe it is important and the marshal I will, I will pipe up and say it was important enough to this undead to come into this city murder your council just to get access to what was below this building that's how important it was to him it should be that important to us do you know what it is that he sought down there, the marshal inquires. I yeah, he... The others because I wasn't there. Yes, <laughs> yeah. A tomb of an old uh, Slomnik knight. And from what the spirit was saying, that possessed a dragon lance. But the only thing that was remaining is this piece. Yes, that looks less than useless. But if it's a... Uh... If there is any potential in it, I'm certain you or uh, your your collective may be able to find out more about it. Uh, what's going on here? One second. Okay. Um, I do believe that the focus of our military should be on fighting the nearby dragon forces and restoring the government. But Derrett has proven himself to be competent and reliable. And Derrett takes that opportunity. Marshal, if, if you would permit it, allow me to take my friends and a contingent of troops into the Northern Waste to investigate whatever the Dragon Army wants there. Vendry kind of... Eh, it's not the most strategically I, sound. I will pi pipe up at that point and say, Derrett has a point. I believe we can, as they say, kill two birds with one stone here. With Bakara spreading rumors about us and our involvement or non-involvement in the deaths of the council, we can spin this as how we are 
hunting down their killers to bring them to justice. And we will also be away from the city so that they won't have to look at us and be reminded of that disturbing news. Mm. Yes, we are of, of the same mind on that. I was just thinking it's... Maybe not the most strategically sound, as uh, there's still so much unknown. But it is a good idea for you to get out of Calaman for a while, just if for nothing else than to avoid the ire of the citizens. It's a distraction we simply cannot have. If, um, if you would give Derrett and I a few moments to discuss details, uh, maybe take this opportunity to visit uh, the castle's library and see what you are able to learn about the Northern Wastes. Thank you. We shall do that. All right. Anybody uh, not want to go to the library? Ancient tomes, I would feel right at home. All right. Well, since we are all checking this out, let's check uh, our history skills here. Pretty good across the board. So not a whole lot known about the Northern Waste, uh, especially after the Cataclysm. There's no civilization up there whatsoever. It is a barren, deadly region prone to flash flooding. And for a few of you... That would be Lance, Doc, and Kadar. You are also able to learn that there are grand ruins predating the Cataclysm that litter this region. Uh, there are very few explorers who survive these attempts to seek them, however. Would I be able to have found any sort of... Um religious connections to these ruins uh specifically anything to do with uh my particular goddess uh which deity Mishikal. uh nothing in that respect no religious uh, connotation or mentions at all in fact uh what yeah, were you I saying paul correctly, just this would it, have been Istar there, area, right? Correct. Is there treasure? Uh, quite possibly. I mean, it's there were civilizations here before the Cataclysm, and as few have ever explored these areas and come back alive, there's a uh, certain 2 plus 2 uh, mentality there that could certainly indicate treasure present. If it's before the cataclysm, there might be information on source there. Very possible. Is what he says to the group and then thinks, you know, can be in the shame chain. I'm going to look for whatever might pass as some maps of the area. Oh, sure. I think I got just the thing. Um, here it is. Just get in one of these and fling yourselves 
out into the northern wastes and see where you come down. Yes. Bet. Uh, here is a uh, illustration of what you may expect to find in the flood-prone canyons of the northern waste. Yummy. Uh, oh, here's another art. Oh, well, this is a little bit of foreshadowing, but it's part of the uh, the setup. Northern Waste, you can expect if there's going to be a lot of flooding, there might be some uh, aquatic life there that you'll have to contend with as well, including the uh, the Watcher in the Water, apparently. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Gnome Flinger, has Tatina Brickle Dust arrived in the city yet? Oh yeah, you guys escorted her here maybe like four or five days ago she met you escorted her here dropped her off to meet with the governor and the council and then you guys were tasked with uh doing a bunch of other things after that but she's still here presumably any chance we could talk to her to see if she's working on anything that might help us where we're going it's uh something you can look into sure i'll maybe go see about that before we leave then okay uh, let me check, check, check. Okay. Yeah, I think the only additional thing that would be of use is this right here, which is identical to uh, the map that we already have on the table. And that's why I unlocked all the names of the locations you can see now, because with this map in hand, you've got a, a, a very a decent idea of what's up ahead here. And uh, Rookle Dust is not difficult at all to meet, as it appears that she has been called via Fargab to meet in the uh, the castle courtyard, and she has arrived with a small wagon that is uh, laden with uh, a number of supplies and parts that uh, it looks like she is uh, going to be part of this contingent that's going into the northern wastes with you. That's Pip. Ah, oh, welcome back. It's been some time. Or has it? I lose track of time with all the work that I do. It's been uh, a little bit, and it's been uh, it's really good to see you. Uh, likewise, likewise. So I understand we've got a, a bit of an adventure across the river into the wastes, huh? Any of you ever been? Never. I, I have not, as apparently it is prone to flooding, and I do not do well with water. So, yeah, no, not not happy about this. Ah, oh, should maybe do some white water rafting, huh? Always wanted to check out. Is Kadara wizard? Yeah, he is. So I'll go over to Kadara and be like, Kadar, in your spell book, do you happen to have uh, the spell of water breathing? I do not, unfortunately. Perhaps we can acquire a scroll of it. I can guys. check with my contact. <laughs> you guys go to the mage's shop and there's just a sign that says gone fishing. Oh! God damn it! <laughs> I can check with my contact. You took that scroll with him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we could steal it. <laughs> I was going to glare at her for a second. If we can get our hands on one, you could add it to your book, you know? Yes, what time? We have a long journey ahead of us. We probably have the time. Um, when we're done here, I'll run over there to see if uh, one's available. I'm not sure how much would, it would cost, though. 
Uh, what level spell is that? Three? Two? Third. Yeah, third level. Okay. I'll start looking that up while you guys uh, continue with what you're doing here. Let me see if there's any additional information I need to convey. Because, yeah, some time is passing by. We have gotten information from the library. Derrett's negotiation results. Yes, indeed. After we have done our research, conducted uh, some business in Calaman, we may have more that we wish to do. Derrett returns. I have uh, gotten Marshal Vendry to agree that uh, myself, all of you, and a uh, contingent of a few hundred soldiers will be heading into the Northern Wastes to investigate the Dragon Army's agenda. To avoid drawing the attention of this army, however, Vendry is has ordered a few ships to ferry us across the bay at night. There is a secluded cove called Wrecker's Edge at the southeastern shore of the Waste. This is where our forces will disembark. And from there, we are to discover the Dragon Army's plot, thwart it, and then return to our ships. I would like to leave tonight, if possible, but uh, if you have need to delay here, we could put it off till tomorrow. I don't see a reason to delay. We are uh, currently trying to acquire a scroll of water breathing, but other than that, we have no other business. While you guys are here discussing, a page makes his way into the courtyard, and he is calling out uh, for Esther and Hoa Khan. I was about to like start talking to somebody. I'm like, oh, uh, pardon, I'll, I'll be back, I guess. Uh, I'll walk over to the page. Little half-elf looks up at you. You are Esther? Hoa Khan? I am Hawaka. Oh, good. I have a, a, a letter for you from Waihan, at, uh, from the apothecary. Ah, thank you very much. Hmm. He passes it over to you and kind of looks around at all the action going on here before he uh, sheepishly turns and walks away. I'll hand him a silver. Oh, turns back and snatches that up with many a... Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And the no. uh, the letter, if you uh, care to read it, Might as well. It's uh, basically just an invitation to meet at the apothecary. It says that she has information regarding your uh, application to the Tower of High Sorcery. I just kind of chuckle and be like, um, "I've been invited to meet with my contact anyway, so I'll go to check out if they have the scroll and how much it might cost." Oh, that's right. I was supposed to be looking that up. <laughs> I will meet you back here. Very well. It's kind of amusing to me that the sorcerer and the bard are the members of the wizards of high sorcery but not the wizard <laughs> exactly well maybe he already is in uh, Egypt because he joined the party later on I think I'm going to have better luck very true looking at the, the DMG bard is a part of it and neither of the other two full casters are is kind of funny <laughs> well I mean a bard is a full caster instead that so Oh, that's how to make one. How much to buy one? I think after 10 years, I'd have this book down a little better. I think you can find it in Xanathar's. It might be in that. Xanathar's! Come on, I got the DMG right here. Work for me. What 
Well, shit. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> um, I got Xanathar's. There it is. Oh, I forgot they got all these pre-gen names in the back. Very nice. Buying magic items. Carousing. Gambling. Pit fighting. Spell scroll costs. Here we go. Oh, okay. So I was looking at the right thing the first time. Perfect. Get that back there. All right. So uh, are you heading to uh, Waihans by yourself? Yeah, that's just not here, so it's just me. All right. So upon arriving, Waihan looks up from the information that she is uh, looking at at the uh, the table. Hmm. My contacts at the Tower of High Sorcery in Weyrith have denied your request to travel there and participate in the test of high sorcery. The threat of the dragon army is too great, and the orders don't want to be perceived as taking sides in the conflict. However, the head of the conclave, the mage Parcellian, has granted you a special exception. Waihan offers you a simple wooden brooch studded with black, red, and white, stone, white stones, the symbol of the mages of high sorcery. He has allowed you to practice magic as a provisional member of the Mages of High Sorcery. The time of your test will be decided after the Dragon Army's threat has passed. Until then, this token represents the Conclave's blessing. Congratulations, Provisional Mage. I will take it with a small bow. Thank you very much, Wahat. She has um, a second one, and she's looking around for Esther. I have not seen Esther since the ruckus at the castle earlier today. Ah, well, in the event that he does return, I shall hold it for him. Very well. Uh, I also want to ask, do you happen to have any uh, spell scrolls that contain the spell for water breathing? You cut her off before she could say, buy something or get out. Let's see if she does. Oh, wow. Yeah, she does. Wow! I have eight of them, as a matter of fact. I've been trying to get rid of them for some time. Would you be interested in one for, say, 400 gold pieces? That's 100 gold less than the standard cost. So I was about to uh, ask if I could have followed him and listened in, um, and if so, I would kind of walk in and offer to assist in buying one. Okay. I look at you and like, um, how much assistance do you have? Because I do not have four hundred gold. I have 210 gold, if that will bring us up to be able to buy at least one. That'll get us to about 300. In the distance, Ilyan is just like, doobie doobie doo. <laughs> hey, I am minding my own business and staying out of trouble for once, so how about we all just be grateful for that? <laughs> I've got all the money, too. Oh. Oh, I'm grateful. Don't worry. <laughs> um, How much would you be willing to give me for a potion of superior healing? Because I have three of those that I might be willing to trade to help with negotiation. Superior. Quite rare. 
I could say that would make up the difference of the coin that you seem to lack. 301 potion. I I would be willing to make that deal. Very good. And so am I. She passes the scroll over, takes a few moments to count over the coin, checks the uh, the potency of the potion and seems satisfied. And otherwise, uh, once the business is concluded, she uh, returns back to the uh, the uh, newspaper that she's reading. Newspaper. That's right. Okay, well, I thank her, and we'll take the scroll uh, with us, and as we leave, I'll look over at um, Lance and be like, where did you get those potions? Oh, that's Doc. Oh, sorry, Doc, and be like, where did you get those potions? I have had them for a while. I was saving them for when I could not cast my own spells to heal our party. However, I feel that this was a more important matter than having all three of them. True. Uh, once Kadar adds this to his book, he'll be able to cast this ritually, which means he won't even need to use up any of his uh, magic for the day. And the, the water breathing lasts, I believe, 24 hours. I could I could use the scroll myself, but I could only just use the scroll once. I had figured that was where you were intending on going, um, which is why I felt it was so important to do this. By the way, out of game, I got it from I got the three from a uh, uh, hype train. Oh. So yeah, we'll come back to Kadar, and I'll hand him the scroll. Be like. That was not a, a cheap fi uh, find, so hopefully we can get use out of that. No, this this is amazing. I'll start copying this into my book as soon as I can. Don't recall offhand what the... Uh cost is in that respect for the special inks it should be reasonably affordable it's 50 per level oh yeah not too bad at all then yep so I, i'm actually 40 short if anybody can pitch in a little bit on ink oh. i can i can give you 20. Uh, well hold on in our little handout here i love gold there's some gold listed there. I don't know if we've used all that. <laughs> we haven't used any of that, to my knowledge. Very true. Well, if you're going to, uh, make sure you subtract it from the, uh, the I love gold! Yeah, 260 right, so. coin. And then 75 yeah. coin. <laughs> yeah, we got almost three, three, three something coin there. Yeah, I'm about three fifty. And I'll take those. And who's holding the the long bows and long swords? And the sixty days of rations. <laughs> I mean, we could sell a lot of that and put the rations in with the rest of the uh, troops' rations. I certainly wasn't carrying any of that. <laughs> No. I think uh, I think most oh. of it we put on the horse. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought uh, Sir Reginald's horse had most of that. Dude, the horse can carry me in full plate armor. Come on. Yeah, I think uh, I just view weight differently than a lot of people. I, I don't know that in 
35 years of D&D, I've met one person who, when I bring up encumbrance and weight, was like, you know what, Daniel? You're right. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll wait for the day that uh, you get in full plate armor and hop on a horse and then also find room for four long swords and four long bows on that same horse. Like, it's not the weight, it's the cumbrance, it's the unwieldiness, like, there's only so much room on the horse. And then My 60 days of rations as well, like... They, they don't all compress down into pill form. <laughs> oh, we're not using magic rations like we usually use? <laughs> not, <It's> just, <laughs> I mean, it's like dried fruit, beef jerky kind of stuff. You know, not like beanstalk beans where we throw them in the ground and it creates a... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> this isn't Dragon Ball Z with capsule court? It could be. I mean, when we played the uh, like Star Wars side of it, like uh, things were more in pill form and what have you. Got 40 of the I Love Gold. Very good. There we go. And, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and uh, transcribe that. It, how long does that take? Because that might be the only uh, thing that we run into. It takes six hours. hours spell. Oh, six hours? Yeah, no problem. Can do that throughout the rest of the day while everybody's packing up and getting ready to go. Uh, Rookledust has taken the last few hours to dye her hair a vibrant violet and uh, seems very excited at the opportunity to field test her far gabs. She has passed out one to uh, each of the platoons and we're going to test uh, just how far the range is on these things, uh, what kind of interference the different landscape might uh, provide for us. And Kujul is also here, our dwarven friend, the leader of the uh, Iron uh, Mercenaries, or whatever it was they were called, all the way back from Chapter 1, standing here with uh, Becklin Uth Viharin, who is not accompanying us, as it would seem. Uh, she seems to have other duties going on. It might uh, involve... Trying to find out just where Esther went, because you know those two are just the best of friends. And once we are all set to go, does anybody have anything uh, else they want to do here in Calaman? Any uh, any inventory you wish to procure or get rid of one way or the other? Maybe those extra long swords, extra long bows, what have you. Or does anybody want to equip those to their own inventory? Um, we can, unless somebody else wants them, we could get rid of those. Uh, I'll take a long sword, just in case. Yeah, decent quality. Dragon Army, uh, weapons, if I'm not mistaken. I know you guys sold the armor because the armor was very obviously, like, painted and covered with the, uh, Takesis symbols, but the weapons, not so much. So, in decent shape. And as far as what we can get... Yeah, long swords, you're gonna get uh, seven gold pieces each for... And long bows, you get 25 each for. So if we sell all four of the long bows, that's 100. If we sell three of the long swords, that's 21. So 121 gold for all of that. And then the rations, we can divide amongst our existing party. And that reduces the weight considerably. Or like Don said, we can just add it to the uh, soldier's uh, food supply, but you got to imagine for 300 plus soldiers, they've got a, a pretty good uh, food wagon or five. Right, but it also means that we'll be eating out of the food wagon. Oh, We've sure. contributed to the food wagon, so therefore um, it, it makes it more palatable that we're using supplies because we've also uh, donated to them. Well, uh, upon seeing that, Derrett will suggest that you do maybe a half and half because, uh, again, the speed of the army is uh, possibly not going to... Uh, well, that's not, that's not how I want to say it. Essentially, 
it's expected that there will be times that your group will be separate from the army of 300 or so as the uh, the landscape and the difficult terrain will likely cause that to occur and additionally he's kind of counting on your group to kind of pave the way ahead and then report back like this is the way you want to go not this way because i mean you look at this map up ahead and it is just all kinds of difficult terrain pretty much once you get across the bay everything every map is difficult terrain okay yeah so we'll we'll keep some uh supplies on us um so that we can venture off yeah just in case the there's the occasional end of day where you're not able to make it back to the uh the regiment because they're going to be traveling i think uh it gives the details here we'll cover that in a few minutes though so once we're ready and we board the ships ferrying the troops, read the following. Oh, wait, I wasn't supposed to say that. Water sloshes and wood creaks as ships depart from Calaman's docks in the dead of night. Citizens gathered to bid farewell to loved ones soon fade from view. The ships cut through the dark waters of Calaman Bay, sailing to perilous shores under cloudy skies. And that gets us through there, through here. And, yep, I've already showed you the map. You can already see all that. Okay, so yes, the entirety of the Northern Waste is considered difficult terrain for the purpose of travel. As a result, you can move at half speed through the waste, as summarized on this little table they gave me here. If you wish to move at a fast pace, you can move 2 miles per hour, 15 miles per day. Note if you scroll all the way to the top right, each hex is 6 miles. Uh, the effect of traveling at a fast pace, however, is minus 5 to your passive perception scores. If you travel at a normal pace, you are able to move 1.5 miles per hour, 12 miles per day. There are no bonus effects or negative effects to your movement. And then if you move at a slow pace, this is how the army will be moving. You are able to move 9 miles a day, a hex and a half. This is partly why it's expected that some separation will occur. Otherwise, it's just going to take you guys forever to get anywhere. And uh, distance per day, 9 miles. The effect, however, you are able to use stealth in that respect. But uh, stealth is also conditional on a group skill check. And yep. Yep. I believe we should move at a normal pace. Yeah, Derrett is very encouraging of you moving ahead of the troops, rendezvousing with them at predetermined points. He is reliant on you to help him determine where to head next. This is a territory spanning hundreds of miles. It encourages us to roleplay every minute of the party's travel so that we can get as Tolkien-esque as possible. What? Uh, it says, stop describing the tree. You've been on it for three pages now. You know what? I'm going to describe it even harder now. What? What the fuck? The third branch from the ground level was conspicuously different in that it had 36 red leaves and 49 green leaves. And it wasn't the proper time of year. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> All right. Um... Uh, random encounters. Yes, if you saw my dice rolls at the start of the session, I did start rolling for random encounters just to kind of set up one of our maps. Uh, of course, we don't need to explore every single hex, but I am going to uh, get a party token on here instead of our uh, standard individual tokens, and then you guys can all have control of the party token. Because I do want to see which hexes we're going into and which locations we are exploring. Because there are a lot of them up here. I don't imagine that we'll explore all of them. Maybe we will. It's all 
up to you guys. You guys know how these modules are. Some of these locations are just going to have a paragraph for description. Some of them will have an entire map or a possibly even dungeon built into it. And well, we also have the advantage of uh, having a flying carpet. We do have that as well for a, a couple of you. And then additionally, yeah. um, some of these locations are going to be part of the, the linear nature of the plot. So some of them you just, you're likely, more likely to go to than others. But yes, there is your party token. We will leave our individual tokens back down here just in case we have need for them. But all of you should be able to move this thing around. Let me get to the next section here. Anything else I needed to cover? Okay. So after we cross the bay in the dead of night, the next morning, as we drop anchor near the rocky coast, waves crash against the jagged rocks. Beyond, red-hued canyons carve their way through a harsh landscape. In the distance, mountainous crags and strange formations jut skyward. And Derrett asks that uh, your characters take a rowboat and find a place where the troops can disembark safely. Okay, we accept. All right. Are any of your characters proficient in water vehicles? I'm not, but I'm going to hop in there and immediately go, wait, how do you operate this thing? <laughs> yeah, I don't have proficiency in water vehicles. Any of you playing a ranger whose favored terrain is the coast? I got survival. Definitely handy. I have the active feet. Can I deceive my way <laughs> Well, in the event I'm not, that... I'm uh, not a doctor, but I play one on TV. <laughs> yeah, and I also have the survival skill, too. <laughs> Can I just pretend to be a pirate? Yeah, in the event that uh, one or more of our characters filled that bill, there are a couple shortcuts we can take here. Let's and we are pretty sure her. I'm going to use that new spell and give everybody water breathing. All right. And I'll just do it with a ritual. Very cool. Post it up. Well, okay then. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where did you find a piece of straw? I don't recall describing that in any of the... the hay the, I slept in. The narratives. <laughs> the hay he slept in. <laughs> All right, we do see a few rotten wooden buildings that have uh, long since seemingly been abandoned, uh, maybe by smugglers, lining a narrow cove up ahead. Uh, it takes about an hour of exploring this shore before we find this, uh, this narrow cove. And additionally, a small ship is anchored near a clear beach inside this cove. Are there any markings on this ship that would identify who it would belong to? As you get closer, there are some markings that uh, can possibly be discerned with an intelligence check. Intelligence history, history more specifically. <laughs> of course, that's what Siliana rolled. Still better than my actual history grades in school, man. <laughs> oh, and by the way, just for uh, mechanics' sake, 
Um, I dismissed my horse um, because we're going to be traveling on the boats and everything like that. And then um, it would um, require 10 minutes for me to recast it to resummon the steed. But since we're going to be in rowboats, then I'm not going to resummon the steed until we get to traveling dry land for a while. All righty. Can you summon a dolphin? Well, only <laughs> only one of you made the history check. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, only one of your characters is an elf, yeah? That being I'm Katie. I'm half elf. Yeah, that would be me. <laughs> well, in that case, it kind of makes sense that uh, J-Man identifies. The uh, markings are uh, very, very faint and discreet. They're, they're more craftsmanship markings than actual identification markings, but... If you're not mistaken, this is a ship belonging to uh, Sylvanesti Elven origin. It is small, but uh, seaworthy. Seems like it's maybe got room for a dozen, 15 people or so. I'll, I'll look over to Sylvana, and in Elvish, I will say to her, I believe that is a ship of your people. It very well may be. But I, believe it or not, spent most of my life getting into trouble and not doing actual things, so I don't actually know. I also, in Elvish, will just look at her and be like, yes, we all believe that. <laughs> I also know it's Elvish, rude. so <laughs> it's, and then it's rude, basically a common language. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, out loud in common, I will say... Feeling a cat. How about in common? I will say to everybody, uh, I believe that is a, a Sylvanesti ship, at least in origin. Whether or not it's actually Sylvanesti aboard, we cannot tell yet. But I do believe that land was conquered, so we may be facing conquerors in that ship. Very possible. More possible than impossible, I'd say. All right, I guess we approach with caution. Good, a couple of us possibly go scout on the carpet. Excellent, but do not engage. Try not to make yourself visible and uh, report back to us as soon as you can. Okay, who's going to come with me then? I'll come with you. If it's, if it's something for stealth, I'm with you. If it's something for perception, you might not want me. Bring the criminals. It can probably argue. only take one easily. I could go with him. Doesn't matter. Does everybody here know Elvin? Uh, probably. <laughs> all right, that's a moot point. I was going to say somebody who knows Elvis should go, but if you all know Elvis, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I know Elvin, Common, Draconic, and Terran. <laughs> well, Terran, like, Dwarvish, and Honestly, me. if there are enemies aboard there, my presence might be more damaging than helpful, so. I can be sneaky with you. And you can be Delvish. Alright, let's go. Whoosh. So, who's going on the carpet? Doc yeah, and thanks. one character. Air yeah, Lance is going with Alrighty. Alrighty. Go ahead, roll those perception checks. Not sure why you brought Lance with a minus one to his perception check. He just likes to ride the fucking thing, I think. <laughs> he can show me the world. Here for a good time, not a long time, all right? <laughs> hey, now. And uh, Doc is pretty certain after a, uh, a sweep over the ship and the, the nearby shoreline 
There is nobody aboard the ship, and there are no hidden anybody's along the shoreline in the uh, the thick brush or behind any of the nearby hills awaiting your approach. Drop me on the ship. Yeah, I'm not dropping you on the ship by yourself. We're going to head back to the rest of the group and let them know. All right. <laughs> All right, well, you make your way back to the rowboat as they're still sailing up closer or rowing up closer to the shoreline there. And once we get back, all right, so whole area seems to be abandoned. Um, I'm, pre I'm very confident that there's no one there whatsoever. Can you tell how long it had been there? Uh, you would guess a number of weeks by the look of it. Doesn't look like it's in disrepair, but it definitely looks like it's been a while since it's moved. It's been there a while, but uh, it's not like it's been there for months or anything, but it's definitely been there more than a few days. Maybe we should explore it to see if there's any... Um clues or supplies or anything like that that we could use um, Dan, does this area other than this strange ship being here look like a good spot for the other boats it does okay so I'll say to Doc um, we're going to approach the ship can you possibly since you're on the carpet go tell Derek that they can start coming this way I mean, I could, but we could also uh, use the far gab. Oh, do we have one? Yeah, every group has one. Who's carrying it, then? Good question. I thought it was just in the rowboat, just sitting next to us. I mean, right now, sure, just in, in general, though, when we're on the move, it's probably a good idea to know who's toting around that thing, because it is kind of heavy. Um, I've got an 18 strength, and it's like a backpack thing, so I'll wear it. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, if you get tired, we can have it set on the uh, carpet with me. If you get tired of carrying it around. I guess we should tell them that they can start heading this way. While we go check that out. Affirmatives greet you on the other side. Word starts passing down from Fargab B to C, from C to D. And, uh, yep, the ships are starting to sail in in the early morning sunrise here. And only a, a minute or so after your own rowboat touches down and the sun is rising up higher, do uh, your characters stepping off of the rowboat spot a lone figure uh, cautiously yet also kind of confidently approaching your group from maybe like 60, 70 feet out and just kind of raises a, a hand in greeting? I look over at Doc. I thought you said it was abandoned. He's not coming what? from the ship. He's coming, like, from somewhere uh, inland. I'll keep, keep an eye on me. I'm going to go talk, and I'll approach this person. Well, let's get this. Well, depending on your Dragonlance lore, this is a pretty cool guy to meet. Or just a random elf. But he approaches with a smile and speaks in Sylvanesti. Do you speak Elven? I do indeed. 
What are you doing over there, Poplu? Although it would technically be Kuala Nesty that I'm speaking. A uh, slight uh, differences in uh, a few word meaning and pronunciation here and there, as, as I recall, but uh, otherwise right. able to be understood pretty well. Poplu, what's going on? This poor guy's not feeling so well. He smiles in response to your knowing the refined language, however. I am called Dalamar. I am called Hawakan. I see we both uh, represent a large contingent of some sort, although uh, I would say yours is uh, considerably larger by far. I am part of a, a group of Sylvanesti elves. Ah, this is your ship then. It is, yes. We've been here for a few months now. Did you happen to spy the Red Dragon army coming through? Uh, let's see here. I thought he had something about that. Nope, 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 nope. No, we've not uh, seen the army here. Well, our primary... Or oh, wait a minute. No, he's doing it wrong here. I'm doing it wrong. I got the fucking information out of order. Oh, nope, that is correct. Yeah. I'm not certain about any army aside from the one that you've brought with you. We're, uh... Our primary mission here is a search for ancient ruins along the coast. There's none here, but our, our leader wants me to continue a, a thorough search anyway. I see. Well, you have... I, I, I would say that you are lucky that you have not run into the army that we are chasing. Oh, you're chasing an army. Tracking, maybe, is a better word. Is there to be a epic battle in the canyons of the Northern Wastes? Uh, it's entirely possible. I see, I see. We, we were going to utilize this inlet for our ships to moor, but uh, if you would prefer, we can find another spot. It, it could take you most of the day to do that. By all means, uh, there's, there's plenty of room for all. Would you be interested in returning with me to my group? I, I know a few who might be interested in meeting you, and it might be possible that our, our angles might line up out here. Certainly, we have to wait for our ships to arrive and set up, so... Let me get the rest of my crew, and uh, we will join you. Beautiful, beautiful. See, so, yeah, I'll come back to the group and let you know what's going on. Yeah, I'm suspicious as hell. <laughs> Can we see the Delmar from where we're standing? Like, it wasn't a billion feet away. It was like 30 or 40 Correct, feet. Correct, yeah. Yeah, at this okay. point, he's no more than Does Ilyana like recognize the, uh, the fellow Sylvanesti, or... Uh, let's check It's just here. some random dude. You've heard of this guy. Yeah, he, um... Let's see. Oh, I might even know him because of my ties to the tower. Right. Yeah, here's where we're already catching catching him in a bit of deceit. As Zilyana knows that Dalimar participated in the ill-fated defense of Sylvanesti against the Dragon Armies. And his desperate actions were part of the reason that he and other mages were sent to the northern, northern wastes. 
And uh, if you know Dalimar, this is just kind of a speed bump for him. He's actually probably looking at this as a, uh, a chance to prove himself even more and potentially strike back against the Dragon Armies. He has long had a fascination with pre-cataclysm magic, uh, even before being sent here. And, uh, da, 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 da. yep, 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 he's, he's known as being very cooperative and amenable, especially if there's, uh, if there's sound logic, common benefit, and, uh, especially if there's any kind of magical interest. He, he is uh, a competent wizard and believes firmly that, uh, magic is meant to be used. And, uh, if anything, he is, uh, known sometimes to be a little bit overconfident. And I'm going to send us to our halftime break here, friends. Go ahead and grab a drink, stretch your legs, and we will catch you in 10-15. Go ahead and uh, continue your RP if you want to, friends. Are you with us? All right, BRB.
try a little bit more, shall we? Alrighty. Everybody back, right? Let's go. Yep. yep. Alright. So Calaman's troops and Derrett will begin unloading the ships and setting up their first camp. And as for us, we will move on. Actually, we're setting up here at Wrecker's Edge is where we found our cove. And that will be marker A for our purposes here. And we are going to have a good little hike here ahead of us. Now to our second marker, almost a full day later. I was say, I thought he was like close by. Yeah, he is. The rest of his people are uh, a bit further up the coast. At least their current encampment looks like they're uh, it's a dozen or so tents arranged in a spiral pattern. So it definitely looks like they can. Uh, move around here quite a bit, but yeah, it takes the better part of the day. He is uh, all kinds of charming during the uh, the journey, seeing what uh, anything he's able to learn about uh, just why your uh, army is here in the region beyond the uh, the presence of the dragon army. But um, otherwise. Arriving at his camp, it is uh, set next to some small ruins on a plateau overlooking these wastes. There are ten elves present. All of them appear to be uh, mages of some sort. And the lead elf, who, uh, for those of you... Even those of you who aren't very familiar with elves, this is a venerable age, even by elven standards. And as soon as your group comes into line of sight of the encampment, the elder elf approaches Dalimar and your group, uh, perhaps a, uh, a bit aggressively, no like spells launching your way, but this uh, is an elf who clearly is not pleased to see Dalimar or any of these strangers. And he immediately demands to know what is Dalimar doing here? And you were told not to bring outsiders here. I'll wait for him to respond before I say anything. All right. Dalimar simply speaks the truth that there is a, uh, a large force of humans that are putting down their ships a uh, 10 miles back or so. And there are reports of a dragon army in this region. And it is possible that while unexpected and uh, an interruption to the research that we are doing here, some of our uh, our goals may align. I will um, respectfully address the elder. What Elamar says is true. We have a contingent here from Calamar. We are tracking a large force of the Red Dragon Army that has gone in a northerly direction. 
and Dalamar here approached us upon seeing our ship's landing. The Elder introduces himself as Jelshuel, if you can spell that based off my pronunciation. That's pretty awesome. Joshua, got it. <laughs> Joshua. I am Hawakan. Are you speaking in uh, Elven? If he has been speaking Elven, then I will be speaking Elven as well. He has. All right. He definitely pauses when the uh, the dragon army is mentioned. But uh, he kind of waves it off just as quickly, almost like it's irrelevant to uh, what's going on with his mission and his people here. And in hearing what he has heard from Dalimar, he just kind of turns to the uh, group of you gathered and also just kind of uh, gestures off into the distance where presumably the rest of your ships are. It matters not if they brought five times the number that you said. They are, they are merely marching to their deaths. Eagerly so, it would seem. Oh, and why is it you say such a thing? There are none so far who have stood against them, if I'm not mistaken. We have had our share of confrontations with their forces. We are still alive. And many of them are not. Survival and victory are two different things, wouldn't you say? That is, you speak truth. Uh, may I ask, uh, honored elder, what do you know of the old ruins of this northern area? Frustratingly little. We are seeking what we can find here, turning over rocks here in these wastes. Not much to be found so far, though. Not but rumors. No. You, you do not have knowledge of what was here before the Cataclysm. Ideas. Suspicions. Um... What was the name of the place that we were supposed to... The, the floating city or something like that? Uh, the City of Lost Names. City of Lost Names. Does the City of Lost Names mean anything to you? What does it mean to you? I believe that is where the Dragon Army is headed. If such a location exists and is as the rumors say, it is a... I believe their goal is to unlock some powerful ancient magic and possibly use it for their benefit. Sounds um, about right. Would this have anything to do with the dragon lances? Ancient relics? I can't see how they would. Would you happen to know anything of one amongst their army who we have had the unfortunate pleasure of coming across in a way? Name of Lord Soth is his response. Whoa! Wow, how did you make that noise? <laughs> <laughs> you have encountered the Death Knight. We have encountered his wake. We did not see him himself; merely his minions.
there's a couple other uh, of the mages who are kind of like trying to like tap on his shoulder while you're having this conversation like uh, I found this over here or there's a possible something or other over here and it's clear that the longer this conversation goes on the more frustrated this elder is getting with just the entire situation not necessarily just your characters but just everything in general to uh, which he abruptly just kind of holds up a hand and uh, steps away in the direction of uh, one of these two elves who's trying to get his attention and he shouts back at Dalimar that uh, he's to continue his survey of the region but first escort these outsiders away and then return to your work they have their business we have ours I'm going to utilize my divine sense. We've had we've had run-ins with uh, strange, possessed, and otherwise unusual creatures, so this encounter may um, require this. And like Soliana's just going to be there, like quiet, unnaturally quiet for her. And kind of looking at Delamar and like confusion, disgust, distrust, anger. That's not revealing anything. Sounds good. I'm glad it isn't. <laughs> Delamar starts to escort your group away and he's kind of whispering I'm sorry I'm sorry he is I don't even know how to explain it he's he's just completely absorbed in the situation just uh, given in to defeat he sees this as a fool's errand that uh, there's there's not there is something to discover up here but it could take a thousand years and a thousand more elves than we have and we could still find nothing he believes this is punishment and he is doomed to spend the rest of his days just turning rocks over here in the waste uh admittedly i i do know a bit about this this dragon army i i did uh i wanted to regardless i have my reasons they were seen headed north. I don't know exactly their destination, but uh, based on your conversations, the City of Lost Names, I am their general aim. I suspect they're not just wandering around looking for nothing. It is uh, mm -hmm. as, as suspected. They probably have similar interests to all of us. Interest in this land's hidden magic. Indeed, I... I did not think they were just wandering. Unfortunately, if this Lord Soth is leading them, he may know the location of this, what is now a ruin, which to him may have been a city. Maybe. It is perhaps ancient enough that its, its location, or at least its current state, may be a mystery even to, to one such as he. Yes, but he would have a good idea of where to start looking. Sure. I think uh, perhaps we all do in that respect. At least we're all in the same the same region. This is a, a city that I learned from Sylvanesti writings that led our contingent to this region. And of course, not knowing its location, very interested in finding it. It is... Uh, a magical marvel that might hold valuable secrets for any of us. I propose an arrangement that will allow me to advance my research without technically disobeying Zelshuel, and at the same time allowing you to perhaps further your aims. Uh, do you have a map of this region, per perchance? I have one, but I am uh, a bit hesitant to get rid of it. We do. 
Wonderful. Would you mind if I made a few notations? I, I would mind. And why is that? I don't trust you. Regardless, what harm could there be in putting an X on a piece of paper? More than you could even fathom. I think you're doing this purely for recuperating what you've done in your mistakes in your past. And I think you care more about that than actually doing the right thing, which is a very strange concept to me. Very well. If this one speaks for you, then we have no further business to conduct. Feel free to wander the wastes and accomplish absolutely nothing, just the same as we're doing here. It's a race to the oh. nothing. Trust me, she does not speak for the group. What, what kind of skill roll can I do for a vibe check on Dalamar right now? Uh, you can roll insight. Insight? Cool. This is not going to go well. Oh. Oh, no secret about it. He's pretty pissed. And not, uh, maybe just not necessarily at you or uh, any of that in particular, but uh, likewise, similar to uh, Zelshuel, they're kind of stuck here, sent on a, uh, a pointless errand, and now they find that they're surrounded by the dragon army all around them, and he sees, like, one opportunity that might possibly turn this fool's errand into uh, something successful, and he's being met with resistance at that, so he's just kind of like, man, fuck everything. <laughs> the mood, though. But if, if Holocon is going to go, quote-unquote, for lack of a better term, override my uh, objection, I won't have further objections, if that makes sense. Yeah, I pull out the map and I compare it with his. Alright. I do insist that he pull his map out as well so that I can... So he's not just looking at my map, I'm also looking at his. Alright. Yeah, he's got I have three. To always know. What's that? I'm just... I'm, I'm just, like, saying to you... Basically, Zoyana's like, you know, we can write the notes on the map. We don't have to follow them. I also don't really trust this game. Yeah, and theoretically, I could just stab them all right now, but I feel like that would piss Reggie off. Yes, I mean, it I don't would. trust anybody new. I think it's uh, it's one of the more interesting campaigns that we've played, which if you put a list of trust and don't trust next to each other, uh, the characters this party has not trusted, I think, would be Lady Becklin, uh, Kugel, Derrett, our dead friend Ispin, who has been dead the entire campaign, uh, half of our own party... <laughs> and then as far as uh, characters we do trust, uh, maybe Lord Soth. That's <laughs> <laughs> his motives, anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's not that we necessarily trust him. It's more of we don't doubt that he has the intentions that he states he has. So. <laughs> I don't think it's so much that we don't trust each other as much as it is nobody trusts me. <laughs> <laughs> and also all those people uh, proved that we can trust them. This, this is just a random elvish guy. Who's part of the reason my land fell to ruin. Exactly. Yeah, he's the only reason. He was the whole linchpin that the dragon... the army. reason! <laughs> Part of the reason, Jesus. 
I don't trust new people, period. So, I mean... Says one of the new people to the party. <laughs> I trusted Alton, and now he's gone. I don't trust anybody else. <laughs> yeah, well, that can uh, that can benefit or shoot you in the foot, depending on uh, what the plot says the and foot. how can, you like, choose to approach it. I guarantee it's going to just shoot us in the foot. Like, hey, I know how this pretty, storm uh, tends to work out for me, and it's going to not be good, probably. <laughs> I've been a pretty open, uh, trustworthy, interesting fella. Well, thank goodness uh, some of the group seems to follow your direction then. Because, uh, yeah, otherwise we might be doing this one hex at a time. And maybe finding something, maybe not. But over here at uh, location C, that is coming up. Uh, yep, 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 yep course uh, explore these in any order that you wish and da -da 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 -da. Oh, so these are stop uh, like places he knows of or has scouted correct he's scouted uh, from afar he has not been able to thoroughly check them out yet because they're a bit far outside of uh, their reach right now and Zelshwell is insisting they stay close here to the coast Yeah, and whatever insights or reports about any magic that remains at these sites that you're able to provide, I should be able to glean more information about where the Lost City lo is located exactly. I'm not certain exactly what you may expect to find at these locations, but they do seem of particular note. Second one may be a bit trickier to get to if you scroll a bit north. At their past peninsula, across the uh, the strait there, is uh, another location out there by the Spires of Dawn. And the third and final is out here by Storm Step. That will be C, D, and E. And uh, again, we can check these out in any order. I believe it is E. Yes. He is going to uh, try to convince Zelshuel to let him meet you guys near the uh, third location. And uh, depending on your ability to keep in touch with him, to which he passes over a sending stone. Alright, I'll hold on to that. Is yeah, I think the sending spell lasts as long as it's on the same plane. So yes, you'll be able to contact me, and if I have a uh, reasonable idea when you can expect to be at that site, I will meet you there at that time. I appreciate your help. I appreciate yours. I hope it is of use for all of us. I did mean to ask, for scouting purposes, if we use the uh, carpet to move ahead a little bit faster, can we move at a slightly faster pace without uh, incurring the perception loss? It depends how fast you're moving. If you guys move at fast speed, it incurs the perception loss regardless. Well, plus only a few, like two people at most can do that. Oh, sure. And then we're also talking uh, party split territory at that res in that regard as well. For uh, that's uh, pros and cons in your that you guys can weigh out depending on what scouting and all that. Uh, Again, pros and cons. Yeah, I'm oh, I would advise against splitting too much. I mean, the carpet is an ideal resource for uh, scouting ahead and stuff, but, I mean, we are chasing an entire army that might have Lord Soth in it. We don't want anyone getting too far ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wasn't talking, like, 
go way ahead. I was talking maybe a uh, half hex at most. A half a hex is three miles, dude. Yeah, it would be more beneficial for us all to stay together. Okay, so is this the time, part of the time where we're um, getting ready to rest and everything like that before we move on to our next location? Sounds logical. And are we going to continue using the waterway to get up to B, or are we going to go over land on that? Well, B is where you're at right now, but where are you, are you going to go C, oh, okay. B, or E? Um, okay, so in, it, anyways, we're, we're pretty much done with boats um, for the most part. Because we're not going to, oh, unless we go to D. Um, I mean, you guys have been on foot all day from A to B, so if you guys need boats to do anything, you're going to have to go back to A to get them. Okay. No, I'm or just uh, trying to figure out. So I'm going to spend 10 minutes and cast uh, Fine Steed and bring my horse back. Okay. I would definitely uh, call um, Derek and them and apprise them of the situation as it stands. You can hear him rustling paper on the other side of the connection, asking you to specifically identify these three locations so he can then transfer it over to his map as best he can. And... Uh, yeah, these all seem pretty, pretty far spread. Uh, uh, even more so from where we're at right now. Um, which do you think you're going to attempt first? I will start sending us uh, in that direction. Of course, it'll be a lot slower, but we're going to cover a lot more territory as well. I think we'll probably just go probably due west towards that uh, area C. I don't know what it would be called on the map, but um, at the end of the uh, the deep drop there? Yeah, we'll probably head there first, okay. just because we got to kind of go around that gorge anyway. It's probably going to take us about four days to get there, but I imagine it's going to take you at least two or three, so uh, we won't be too far behind. Uh, just don't move on until uh, until we catch up with you. Understood. If, if we finish at D, could we have the boats go there and just meet have Derek meet us there? Um, the boats are to remain here at Wrecker's Edge for our return back to Calaman. They're not for our use and exploration. We're not certain what kind of water presence the Dragon Army might have out here, and we only have a few traveling boats, not warships. Yeah, true. Okay, so let's prepare our camp, uh, get ready for first light, be... Uh, we could transfer some of our weight and our equipment to the horse itself. Um, we'll all walk, and the uh, horse will most likely carry supplies. All righty. Let me scroll up a bit here, check my random encounters. It's kind of buried under our gameplay now, but I should be able to get to it. Yep. 
Oh, that's right. That's where my computer shit out. Nothing, something. That is the something, and that is the condition. Okay. Next day, we start rolling out. Go ahead and move your party marker into the hex of choice towards location C. See just what we're exploring there. We're going to take that route. All right, and we do have a potential encounter here as we are traveling through uh, gorge number 1,242. Let's have each of you roll a survival check. Fine, everybody make it then. Alright. Apparently, apparently Zillianna's watching us make survival checks. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think so. No, I got my purse. Oh, dang it. Oh, hold on. My internet's like cutting in and out in microburst and it is breaking everything. Womp womp. Technology has oh, worked yeah, me the entire week. I'm not expecting it to now. So Jan is making sure that Valimar isn't following us. For real though. Just constant looking out for Dalimar <laughs> and doing vibe checks the whole time. Why is it you can roll good on perception when you're not trying to roll perception? Uh, because God hates me? Like, I don't... Do I pass with a 13? Oh, everybody passed. DC was 12. Hmm. Not sure which of these is better. Whatever. Honestly don't know why they bother with tokens for things that they're not going to give a picture to and they just write the name inside of it instead. Oh, how descriptive. I could do that. Alright, as we are marching through this uh, gorge, I have lost my spot on the notes. That's brilliant. There we go. So yes. A group survival check that, uh, once again, every one of you made. Only half of you had to make it to be successful. And it is there that you notice signs of water beginning to fill the canyons, giving you time to reach safe ground. On a failed check, however, you uh, may have been caught inside of a flash fluid. And with that being the case, this will be our map instead. As the uh, gorges are now filled with water and will be for the next little while. So uh, making use of uh, the canyons, at least in that respect, is a no-go. 
It did, however, allow us to avoid a uh, encounter with uh, giant sharks in their territory. However, now we're just going to transfer that to flying dragon-like creatures also kind of in their own territory. So go ahead, drag your tokens out uh, roughly to the middle area of the map. Hmm, I wonder what these flying creatures might be called. Yeah, right? <laughs> George, Billy, Paul. Hmm. Wasteland of Ancelon are home to these dragon elves, draconic creatures closely related to copper dragons. They are lithe and quick, with scales the color of dull copper. Wow, with that much description, you'd think they could have just had somebody illustrate the fucking thing. Uh, these playful creatures uh, will kick your ass by flying out of your reach and spitting potent acid in an approximation of their copper dragon relatives. Uh, -da -bum 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 -bum. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this will become noteworthy almost instantly. They uh, do not provoke tax of opportunity when they fly out of your reach, thanks to their flyby action. And otherwise, yep, yep. Oh, come on, roll 20. Here we go. 45 feet elevation. 50 feet. This is maybe 5, 10 minutes after you guys have uh, scampered out of the canyon. So getting your uh, boots dry, kind of reorienting which... Uh, which way you're going to go, how you're still going to try to make true west while still avoiding this canyon that is now suddenly flooded in front of you. When these creatures come flying from the skies above. And if this is our starting positions, then let's roll initiative. At least Katie's good at initiative. I think so. Even I gotta be good at something, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand they don't provoke attack of opportunity leaving our area because of flyby attack. I have an ability specifically that says that as they enter my square, um, I could use a reaction to do an attack of opportunity. Will that still count? I would say so. Okay, thank you. Yup. Okay. Any further details about this? Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. Oh, this thing, that's what I was looking up. What is its dexterity? Oh, damn. I have tied Katie's initiative with a 21.16, so we're going to have a straight D20 dice off here to see who truly is going first. I got a 15. Oh, at least that wasn't your attack. There it is! All right, so these things are uh, going to get the drop on you. You do see them coming, but not before it's too late. They got a 60-foot move and 60 feet of range on their acid spit. So I am thinking, let's get that out of the... Get out of my way. Don't want you to... Got this guy just standing right out here in the open. Got this guy in this horsey. Got that elf. Everybody's in the range. That's right. I can do what I want. And let's uh, 
one of two targets. It's going to be Lance. This thing is just going to kind of fly right over your head and spit down on you as it does so. Ouch! A 22 to strike! When it oh. flies over, does that? Does it go? Hock <laughs> to Alright, that is a 22 to hit for 21 acid. Ouch. That is 45, 55, 60 feet of movement as it is still 45 feet up in that direction. Over here we have, I think, four different targets. Well, this may be the worst decision this thing ever makes, but it is going to fly right through here, descending as it does so to touch down right in front of Doc. We're then going to lift up 15 feet after that. That does fly through uh, Don's attack of opportunity range, I do believe. Of course... <laughs> I, mean, I guess if I were a flying gelatinous cube, you would have hit me. Probably. And this thing is going to get right up in Doc's face and try a pair of rend attacks. A 15 armor class. Looks like nope. that hits. Yeah, that'll hit. 15 slashing and second rend attack is this one will be on Reginald it is uh, 12 armor class Bink. and then we elevate 15 feet back back up 5 feet in the process and the third and final one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Five. Pretty much the whole field. Oh, it's going to spit right over at Hawakan and just kind of continue to hover right over here in this space. Uh, 22 to strike Hawakan. For Leave 16. me alone, I'm fragile. Oh, 16 acid damage. And thankfully, that's it for that. It's a pretty nasty random encounter. Ziliano, what you got? Well, basically, fuck all is what I got. Uh, I don't have anything arranged, and I can't swipe at things to keep feet in the fucking air. Um, and I don't even see places where I can just go do a little hidey hide until it's over or until something lands. Um, Anything. Yeah. I don't think so. What that? Get on the carpet. Oh, that'll only work out so well, probably. But I mean, sure, we we could try that. Who, who's got the carpet thing? <laughs> yeah. That would be me. So I start I'm gonna smacking people off to... the carpet 50 foot drop <laughs> I would like to try to convince him to allow me on the magic puppet to go make some attacks yep fun I'm gonna assume slash pray I don't have to do some sort of skill check to do that oh no you're good okay cool all right, then we are going to go. Oh, there's two of them I could do. I'll just do the one that's like directly in front of Doc over here. Yeah, 
You gonna ready your action for? All right. Uh, technically, you're not up next to it until Doc takes his turn and moves. So technically, you hold oh, your action okay. until he yeah. does, and then we'll just use that That'll result right action. there. Okay. Yep. My bad. All good. Uh, we'll pass it over to Lance's turn. Uh, this one's within longbow range, right? I would think so. Yeah, I'll take two shots on that. Alright. Action search. That's a hit and a miss. Mm -hmm. Name person. Okay. Then I'll second wind get some health back very cool I'll have him back not too bad and then we will legendary interrupt and make it Justin's turn Yeah, yeah, I have legendary <laughs> interrupts, apparently. <laughs> um, so, ow, that really hurt. Uh, like a little bit. All of... um, let's see, so they're going to be riding up a fucking carpet over there. Let's see if I can get this thing to leave us alone for a second. Uh, the one that spit at me, I'm going to um, start whispering uh, words of magic toward it. All right. Okay. Wisdom save is a... The fucking 17. Very high on uh, that one. I guess I'll take five damage then. All right, five s -s -s psychic. Yeah, we'll take that. And that's it. All righty, over to Doc's turn. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and cast Spiritual Weapon on this one here. To smack him. That is a near miss. The AC is 13. Alright, and then I'm going to go ahead and move the carpet and uh, Zilliana over to the one that she wanted to hit. All right. Should be able to move that uh, spiritual weapon around now how you need. And then Katie already made her attack for. Um, 19. Okay. Ouch. We'll take that. And then pass it to Dawn's turn. Okay. Um, due to the uh, Squire ability, it only takes me five feet to get onto the horse. So I get on the back of the horse. Horse and I ride towards the one that's 15 feet up. Do you take the uh, the gear off of the horse? Like the supplies? Um, yeah, well, 
I was thinking they were hanging off the sides, like saddlebag type. But if it's required to be on the top of the horse, then yeah, I'm just gonna get the stuff off the back of the horse and get on it. Well, I was thinking like some of each, like it's on the side and it's on the back. And then if you take the uh, supplies off, each of these Dragonels will use its reaction to fly over, steal the group's supplies, and then fly away with their flyby attack. And there's nothing no. to do about it. And ha 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 ha! That's the joke. So, Go ahead with your turn. <laughs> getting on the horse, which should put me within range of this. I have reach on my yes. halberd. I'm on the back of a horse, so I'm going to take two attacks on that one. Your horse so fucking tiny. <laughs> I know. It's, 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 I it's, didn't it's, make it. <laughs> I didn't yeah, make the horse. It's like one of those little mini ponies. <laughs> it's uh okay, so it's a war horse, and yeah, that's just the default size that they gave it. So change that, and should pop up as large going forward. Hey, you hit it, and you hit it again. Uh, for twenty. Ouch. Okay. Stabby stab. And that'll be the end of my turn. Mm-hmm. And Kadar to finish off this round. Look at this guy standing in four squares. Who do you think you are, Don? All right, Kadar is going to look at the one there really close to being within attack range of him. And he's going to get to shout out and Draconic, you kiss your mom with that mouth? <laughs> and I will try to... Try to make it laugh with Tasha's hideous laughter. Oh, man. Creature with intelligence of four or less. Nope, we're better than that. Uh, we are immune to... Not that. Wisdom save. Okay, here we go. Hey, it failed! Hey, DC, I got a 10 on the save, so... So he's going to fall prone, and he'll be there. He can make another save next round. Right. Uh, yeah, this thing will just uh, kind of clumsily fall to the ground. Thankfully, we have wings, but... Uh, once we're on the ground, those don't help as much. And yeah, you've never seen uh, an animal in hysterics like you've seen right now. Okay. All right, that's going to be my turn. All right, well, let's check that one right now at the end of its turn. We'll try another save. And it makes it with a 17. But it is still uh, prone until next turn when it can actually take an action to get out of it. As for this one, we've got... Yep, it's going to fly right down here and descend into flank attack position. And then similarly, ascend back to 15 feet after doing so. It's going to take a rend attack on Doc and Zilliana. I oh. they're technically they're also 15 feet up because they're on the carpet. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah, I never needed to uh, descend. So, I guess I'll elevate to 30 feet then after that. Uh, but, yeah, shit, that is a 19 to hit Doc for 10 slashing and a natural 20 on Zilliana for 19 slashing. This one right here, divide its attacks between Reggie and Doc. 
So first strike on Reggie is a natural one. And the strike on Doc with flank advantage is a 20 to strike for another 11 slashing. And that will be a day for the Dragonels. Pass it over to Zilliana's turn. What, what's the height on the one that's below me and Doc? I can't see like the little wings thing through all of the stuff. Yes. This one is equal to your height. The one to the okay. north of you is 15 feet higher. Well, I'll just go ahead and do the one that's right there. As pissed as I am, the other one got a net 20 to hit me. Uh, we'll just make life easy. The one in front of me. Ouch. Okay. 16 more damage. Yeesh. And then that's my turn. All right. Lance is up next. Gonna come down here with this one. Gonna fainting attack. Okay. Do have advantage already as it is prone. Extra damage for yeah. the superiority die though. For sure. Seventeen. Hey, solid. Eighteen. Make up your mind. Seventeen or eighteen? <laughs> it was just seventeen. <laughs> All right, got it and got it. Ouch. And that's me, sir. All right, J Man, back to you. Alright, so let's say the one that's on the ground, I'm gonna blast him, basically the ground around him, with this. I got an 11. We're going to take 14 thunder. Okay. Ouch. All right. Got some, got some damage this time. Yay. Woo. A bubble. All right. Well, let's see what Doc has up next then. All right, so the spiritual weapon's gonna keep on smacking at that one. All right. Oh, wow, yeah, it will. Oof. Ow, smack. Thing just roars in pain as that spiritual weapon opens up a real nasty gash in its exposed underbelly. And then I'm going to use uh, let's deck save. Is this the one right next um, to you? Yeah, and the one right next to me. Okay, Dex is a 19. No damage on that one. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to go ahead and maintain where we're at right now. All right. Don, your turn. All right, uh, I'm going to uh, take another couple of attacks on the one that I can reach. That is a hit, and the natural 20 will finish it off. Collapses with a thud in the dirt. The other two roar in protest in Reggie's direction. And that will end my turn. All right. Uh, Kadar, your turn. All right. The one that's prone over here. Um, I would have disadvantage with a ranged attack, wouldn't I? Correct. Assuming it's a ranged attack. So we're going to walk up to him. Yeah. We're going to walk up to him and try a shocking grass. All right. With advantage. Oh. <laughs> 12 lightning will leave me with one hit point. All right. He can't take reaction, so I'm going to move away. <laughs> All right. It is still prone and just all kinds of jacked up. He's like, man, he's like, ah, tag you it. He ran away. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that changes my anticipation. Get one more round in here. Ought to be able to wrap it up before we close out the sesh. Um, yeah, three of you have earned its ire. Uh, Lance gets the short straw right now, though. This thing will reorient itself. Float up five feet. Take a pair of rend attacks. And, uh, both of them will miss. Repulse. Then, oh. It would just be the 12 of them. And that kills that one. And shit. Alright. One, two, three of you right here. Hawakan. And Doc. Each of you get a rend attack. Ouch! 23 to hit Hawakan for 11 slash. And a natural 20 on Doc for 12 slashing. And let's see, that meant I had to descend 15, 25 feet to get both of you. I could do that oh. as part of that 25. I'm all guys like watching the other one get killed and I'm going, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? 35 feet and 35 feet. Yeah, this one is screeching in anger and rage and pain. And uh, yeah, yeah, this thing appears uh, intelligent enough to know that if three of them could not take down your group, it by itself doesn't have a chance. So it's going to slash slash and then take advantage of its flyby to... Get the hell as far away as it can for right now and pass it over to Ziliana's turn. Okay. I'm going to ask Doc if we want to go after that one or if we think he's retreating. We could catch up to it and kill it. Let's go. Sure. 
So I guess what she's saying is she's readying an action so that when Doc gets up to him, he she gets an attack on it. Sounds about right. Yes. Uh, what's Lance doing? Uh, taking a shot at her, I guess. Okay. So, looks like seven damage. Yeah. And yeah, that'll uh, hit it true from a good distance out. Screeches and throws a middle talon in your direction on its way out. One last fuck you. <laughs> uh, J Man. I yell at it. <laughs> All right. Con save is... Uh, I could add them together and I didn't make the DC. So 15 thunders. <laughs> Loud report. Boom up there in the skies. And that would bring Doc's turn up. All right, I am going to fly me and Ziliana towards it with uh, Ziliana at the front of the carpet so that she's closer and then I'm right behind her. Okay. And I'm going to hit it with Guiding Bolt on my way to... Alright. That will hit for 10. That will hit for 20. Well, technically, he's hitting it with Guiding Bolt first. Uh, on the way over there. And then when she gets there, she has advantage to attack it. Which makes her get sneak attack. Okay. And then it's dead. Sorry, Don. I know you had plans of sprouting wings on your steed and also just showing... Oh, yeah. No. I was no, just gonna... Nobody you know. will ever retreat from us! God forbid! <laughs> nope. Actually, there was no way I was gonna catch that thing. So I was like... I mean, I can stay under it, but it's like 35 feet up. Yeah, there was no yeah. way I was gonna get anywhere near that. Yeah, I mean, best. it's funny because Hawakan would have let it run away, but it had nearly just, you know, eviscerated. Oh, sure. Moments ago. I was sure. Like, ah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. These things uh, did a fair amount of damage. And I mean, best case scenario, it was going to turn and slash out twice more and then run away and then just get bombarded a few seconds later. So that's all it's got. And, uh,. First, play, first player who says I loot the corpses uh, is uh, the proud owner of a lost level of experience. And uh, yeah, I have to wonder if we would have done any better against the sharks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I had an entirely different, I mean, we might still encounter it, but just in case we don't. Um, in the event that your group did not make it out of the flood, and I did uh, consider using the same map for the uh, the Dragon Elves, as you can see. But, uh, yeah, the sharks would have been... And then I had an animated water effect to simulate the rising of the water through the canyon because I'm sure everybody would have been like, yay, I'm safe! Oh, damn, I'm drowning again. And then, of course, the water breathing helps out with that, but not so much with the uh, disadvantage for moving around underwater. But we are here in the midst of Chapter 5. It is a seven-chapter module, my friends. And we are inching closer. We had a, a little random encounter here. We had some set encounters on our way to Deep Drought and eventually to Storm Step, the Spires of Dawn, and possibly even further up into this region there beyond in the sessions to come. 
Thank you for being here tonight. A full party here for Friday Crew. And uh, a solid 10, 12, 13 viewers. I think we went up to uh, 14 even at one point tonight. So thank you out there in Streamland for keeping us rolling strong here. Your support is greatly appreciated. Not forgotten. And as always, there is no RU without you. Much love and good night, friends. We'll see you around next time. Have a good night. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, y'all. Good night, everybody. Bye.